Hello everyone, it's Uncle Destiny back with you, and it's time for us to get the reading done for the month of July. We have recently just had the summer solstice, which was last week, and we are now in the period of the summer, or, or winter, depending on where you are in the southern hemisphere. Now, why this is important is that it's also meant that energy has shifted. We are getting, those of us here in the northern hemisphere are getting a lot more sunlight and a lot more energy from the sun which means that there's a lot more vitality. But there's also that aspect of energy is here that can get misused. So it's important for us to see what the ancestors have to say for the month of July and this summer season that we are now in. All right, so we have thrown the bones. And here is what we've gotten from the ancestors and spirits. Now, we've got a new number up this time. What I'm seeing here, though, is that it, there's a lot of things going all over the place. There's a lot of... There's, again, that sense of... I said there was the sense of vitality and energy. There's a lot of energy moving on, a lot of choices, a lot of decisions, a lot of actions being put into place. So we'll start with our main bones because we've got one that's off here. This one, this one is work. And the issue that I see there is that with work and being half on and half off is that your focus in this month of July is not always going to be fully on work. Work is going to be there. Work is going to be, and again, that's both the thing you do to pay the bills and what you do, what your purpose is here. And there's this for this month of july it's in a sense that it's not the main focus it's not the main focus of where you're going to be and not where all the energy is but there's also stuff that's in energetic and dynamic change so there's some things you're gonna to have to just be patient and wait for them to take their place these are much bigger things that are moving and they're going to move at their own speed so there's stuff to be aware of to be watching but there's stuff you have to wait because there's stuff leaving, there's stuff coming on. But all of it is going on at the same time and July is going to be a month where you're not going to be focusing heavily on work. Or at least it's not going to activate a lot of your mental space. So over here, when we get to our other two, this one is family. Or excuse me, this one's not family, this one's home. This one is family. And again, home, which as you can see, we've got a lot of stuff that's not around it, save for our, our intellectual bone here, is that home, again, is also going to be something that it's not going to be the biggest priority. It's not going to be the biggest focus in time. You're going to be very aware of it. You're going to be enjoying what, what that solitude that it can provide, that refuge it can provide, but it's not your main focus not the place to be focused. Now this one, which I said was family, this is the one that is going to be the biggest thing going on in July. And I can also say that it's not just family as being your immediate family or your chosen family. This is also family of our community, of our state, of our country, of our world. There's a lot that's going to be going on much more in that in the social relationship side of things and one of the things one of the big points here is like when we look at our quartz crystal it's present here in proximity of these support bones so this is about memory and as i've said before crystal is more about the uh, memories it's the place where we hold our thoughts it's the place where ideas are but they're not necessarily ones that need to be affected right now they're things that we pulled up to review i mean there's the classic idea of a memory trapped in glass it's the sense that it is held in its place in a kind of preserved state now whether that is a preserved state that is positive or is that a preserved state is negative is part of the question and how are we viewing that? How are we learning from it? Because it's also under glass, it can also be highly 
observed. It can highly be uh, in, inspected. And so we need to be able to suspect it, but we need to be able to inspect it with a, with a sense of support. How could a situation... Okay, so let me back up there. Uh, someone once, conversation I was having once, stated that when he was talking, this uh, he was an African-American gentleman, he was talking to his great aunt, who, whenever she told stories about the past, she was extremely bitter. And you could, he could see that she was living in that pain and in that um, discomfort of those memories, which he appreciated and acknowledged. And yet, he also wanted to, to say to her, what was, where was the joy in that memory? Where was the things and knowledge in that memory that you took away that helped you survive, that helped you have a better situation down the road? And it's that sense of, are we inspecting memory only from one lens? Yes, there was a negative to it, but where was the positive in it? Yes, the memory was positive, but was there also an element of negative that we weren't being aware of and did in turn by focusing on that negative or just acknowledging that negative in there are we stripping away what the positivity we've learned from it and that's part of what's going on here with the quartz crystal especially in relationship to um, family and society there are multiple facets of what has happened in our history and within our own families, within our regions, within our nations and states, and frankly, frankly, our world that are negative, and we need to be able to put them into the proper context and view and include them as an integrated self. And that's part of what I see here with the crossed um, rib bones. Each of them is an inspiration, but they cross each other and they form this X, they form this place of intersection and where they intersect is the greatest place of change is the greatest place of knowledge we're going to pause here because we got a vacuum cleaner going down the hall um and that's part of what we've got and focusing on in our relationships with our family because we're going to be moving forward and change is happening and it's going to take being able to balance all of that so that it doesn't tear us apart. Equally, we have the shell, which is turned outward. So this is going to be about situations outward from the body. I'm going to pause here again. And it is the, the world, nature. Nature is going to be having a major effect on everyone in some shape way or form uh, in this next month or within at least this next two months since we are now in this warmer state it is going to become apparent and this is also that point of we're going to have to revisit and change how we view situations how we view the aspect of a crisis that happens and not see it as a way that we need to sort of hunker down and protect ourselves the critical issue right now going on here in the States is one of the critical issues is the issue of the ICE containment camps, which might as well be concentration camps from the standpoint of people fleeing, trying to seek a different life. That is something that every human has done throughout history. Everybody has moved for some reason some change and with it comes a lot of discomfort but it's also uh, another one of our components of life we once were a migratory species before we settled down doesn't mean that we also can't become migratory nomadic once again and if so we need to be able to have people who welcome and work with us but nature is definitely going to be be flexing its muscles and it's going to be flexing its muscles hard next we come to the copper piece and again its proximity to the nature bone as well as to our dice and it really says that there's a lot of spiritual energy that is behind what's going on here 
spirit's not happy with everyone. And there are those that spirit is happy with, and it is helping and supporting them in a way to maintain that positive relationship. But always remember, a positive relationship can take many forms, and that support can take many forms. If there is a positive, ex if there's a reasonable exchange between the two. So we're going to finish with our last one, which is our dice, which is presently up on the number nine. And the number nine in the ninth house means travel, study, higher learning, morals, and ethics. Now, with the fact that it's in this proximity closer to family, or to the social family category, it really re reinforces what is what's going on here also with the nature. There's going to be a lot of issues in this next month that are going to center around our morals and understanding where morals actually end and begin and where does our ethics end and begin. And are we confusing the two? Because sometimes a moral argument is really an ethical argument. And how are we also learning, especially learning that difference between what is morals? What is ethics? How are we oh, being open to learning and accepting new information? Especially of a higher level. And that higher level can take its place in the form of nature itself. Not just book learning, but nature. Nature can teach many things. And that means taking that time to study having that moments of patience, having that moments of wonder. And that traveling is also one of those aspects of we learn, we have our moments of wonder, we have our moments of understanding, and we can study by traveling as well. Yeah, I know we've got some outer ones here, but they're not really that important. There's, again, stuff coming in. But not really stuff that we really need to be worrying about. Our central focus is here. And that is where we need to be focusing our time and energy on. How do we, how do we move around and travel to learn? How are we taking higher learning, both from books and institutions, but also from nature, which is one of the highest learning institutions there is? And how are we understanding what is moral, what is ethical, and not confusing the two or knowing when what we need to argue, what we need to focus on, what we need to make our decisions from is from a different place. A place maybe of ethics more so than morals. Because it is easy. It is easy to say morals, which ultimately become, which is ultimately part of judgment. Ethics requires discernment, and it can be difficult. And in that difficulty, we find the greatest beauty and the greatest potential for learning and for change. So as the advice that I've had from others is, take the difficult path, take the unknown path, so we can grow. On behalf of the ancestors, the Rishas, the Loas, nature itself, Ashe.